Well, hello, dear friends. Happy May. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day thus far. I'm so excited. We're going to put the cards together today um, that are featured in the May 2023 Stamp of the Month kit. So um, if you guys have not seen the catalog, I want to show you what the actual stamp set looks like. It's so cute. It's my favorite of the three that were featured in this catalog. I love the little skunks. I can't ever remember a time that we've had skunks in a stamp set since I've um, been around close to my heart and I think they're super, super adorable. And I think maybe one of the reasons why I loved them so much is because um, I didn't have to kind of, I didn't have to overthink the coloring, right? Um, very quick and easy to color. So we're going to be working with these fun little guys today. And as you know, or may not know, if you're watching this, uh, you can get this uh, stamp set that is originally $19.95. You can get it for only $5 with your order this month, um, or you can get it for $0 if you are a VIP with your order this month. And so um, you can get it um, at a great savings or even free uh, during the month of May only. Okay. So we're just going to go right ahead and get started. Um, all four cards, I've done something new that I have never done before. All four of the cards are the exact uh, same style and they're going to go together the exact same way. All I have done is essentially changed out the cardstock colors, the pattern paper colors. Um, you'll see that some of the shadow box frames are different different uh, shapes. This one's an oval. This one is a, I don't know what we would call it. It's, it's, it's an arch on the top and then it's a square on the bottom. So name it whatever you wish. <laughs> um, and then we, of course, we have changed out the stamping sentiments and you've got different skunks in there as well. But the fundamental part of the cards go together the exact same. And that's what I want to share with you guys today. So we are going to create one of them start to finish, um, but really all four of them are going to go together the very same way. So once you've watched this video, you'll be able to put the others together the very same way. You'll just, of course, change out the um, stamped images and that kind of thing. So we're going to put this one together today um, and I will move these out of the way. Now, the fun part about this is that these cards are, um, they're, they're kind of interactive, right? They have some really cool dimension. You can see it pops up like that. I don't know what we should call this card. I don't know what the... I don't know. I don't know what they should be called. I'm just referring to them as a shadow box card um, because it does give you the effect of a shadow box, only it has got to be the easiest, most simplistic and quickest to create shadow box I have ever created. And I have created several. Um, so it's going to go together with two different pieces and I'm going to walk you guys through how to put that together. But this is the fun part. You can see it's going to pop up and it has this really great dimension. So you can see through the little frame there, but it's going to smash perfectly flat and it goes right back into a regular envelope. It will fit inside a regular A2 size envelope. And you know that that is four and a quarter by five and a half. So inside your kit that you guys will receive free when you place your order of $75 during the month of May on my website, you're going to get your base pages. You're going to get four um, envelopes. You're going to get four um, the pieces to create all four of the cards that you guys will see here. Um, you're going to have three four by six pieces of white cardstock so that you can have um, any, you know, go through and pick the skunks that you would like, um, stamp them, trim them out, color them in, um, you know, whatever color scheme you're you're feeling it today, right? Um, you'll have plenty of paper to do that. So I've even included the white cardstock for you guys to, to cut everything out of. And then of course in your baggie um, is going to be your uh, layout pieces and then your, um, these are your card pieces, okay? So we're just going to go right ahead and dive in. I am going to unstaple this because we're going to be working with that little packet today. Okay. So we are going to, you're going to need one of the mink, uh, just the little flat pieces. These are four and a quarter by five and a half. You need one of those. There's four of them, of course, because you guys get to make four cards. Um, you can de decide which shape you want. We'll go ahead and just, um, for sake of the video, we'll recreate this one the exact way that it was before. So I'm going to grab the one that has the arch on top and the uh, square at the bottom. So these are the two pieces that we need. I have already uh, cut and stamped, stamped and trimmed out my skunks because that would be a part that would take a little bit on the video and I didn't wanna make it um, super duper duper long. But we'll go ahead and we'll grab our pieces out of here. So we're going to need a piece of the striped pattern paper. This is my favorite print in the entire Hey Handsome paper collection. I love that one, probably because it has the most colors in. And I always think that helps um, to be able to, you know, match them to the other more solid type uh, patterns in the kit. But this is definitely my favorite. Um, you're going to need two of the long uh, scalloped borders. And you can, they're, they're all the same size, guys. So you can pick either the 
orange or the green, it doesn't matter. You can pick the ones with the little um, cutouts or the ones that are solid. It's up to you guys. They're, they're all the same size and it's up to you what you want to put where. Okay. So don't worry about overthinking that. I'm going to go ahead again. We're just going to create it like the original, just for the sake of the video. And then inside your little envelope, you're going to need your frame. So this one is using a green frame. So I'm gonna grab that out here quickly. Um, as you would know, as you would guess, of course, the um, the frames that go in the oval uh, cutouts of the other cards that we're not going to put together today, um, they will have a matching oval frame. Now, this piece here is going to serve two purposes. It is going to um, not only give us uh, an additional decorative layer, you know, for because it looks pretty, right? Um, but it's also going to provide stability to kind of um, help our card to maintain that shape when it's popping up off of that back panel there. Now, I will mention if you guys, um, these come just flat like this, guys. You can, um, if you are creating a card knowing whom you're going to send it to, you can go ahead and write your message or stamp your message on the back if you would like to do that. Or you can uh, stamp it or write it on an additional, like maybe a piece of white cardstock and um, make Make that, you know, sign it, stamp it, decorate it however you wish, and then glue it on the back here. It, it's not a big deal. You can even have these already put together before you add your piece on the back because you're not going to harm it to flatten it down. Like I said, it's made to, to be completely flat inside an envelope, but then you can glue it down and you're not going to harm anything. It's not like you're going to crush the um, front of it or anything like that. You also could go ahead if you wanted to and you just really felt strongly about keeping it in a traditional card base, you could go ahead and put some adhesive on the back here and then just glue this to the front of your card base and then it would open like a regular card and you could stamp and sign and decorate the inside of it if you wish. So you have several options um, for this but I wanted to quickly share that with you guys really quickly. So we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and get going. Um, first of all, I wanted to show you guys something really, really quickly before we moved on about my coloring. So I, um, if you <laughs> Those of you that are watching this and have followed me for a long time, you know that I don't really have super great skills with the alcohol markers. Um, I wish that I knew how to do all the fun blending and all of that stuff, but I just really don't. I just really don't. But what I wanted to show you guys was a simple little trick that I like to do because I'm not good at blending. This is my own way of adding multiple colors um, in the easiest way possible. So um, this is one of the flowers that we're going to put onto our card. I want to hold it up and see if my camera will focus. If you guys can see, there are two tones in that leaf, right? That's the very same marker. I have not used the um, blender marker or the... I. It's called the blender marker. They really should be the eraser marker, right? Because it's actually erasing color. It makes it, um, you know, it takes the color up off of the paper. But we're just going to use the, the marker. I'm not using the eraser, but I want to show you guys how easy I did that. Okay. There's nothing to it. And let me just assure you, absolutely assure you that if I can do this, anyone could do this because this is, this is no skills, my friends, no skills. So quickly, it's on the supply list that you guys can find it over on the blog. Um, but the three markers that I used for the entire kit, um, we used the Coral Blend marker. Um, today, I have used the lightest color for the coral. And what I did was I colored in the big petals on all of the flowers. You can see the flowers that are on the, the small pieces here as well as her crown. I used the lightest coral uh, marker for those colors. And I also put just a little tiny bitty uh, strip on her nose if the phone will autofocus. There it goes. So you can see just a little bit of color down there because we didn't need to give off Rudolph the red nose reindeer vibes, but I wanted a little bit of color on there just to kind of distinguish it apart from the rest of the little skunk. So there's a little strip there of that light coral. And then um, for the inside of our flowers, I use the medium on the orange blend marker. So we've got light coral, medium orange. Now let's move on to the leaves. Those are what I want to show you guys today. So everything else is colored for you again, just to kind of save, um, time for the video. And, um, I've always said for years and years when we've used alcohol markers is you don't want to um, color back and forth like we did when we were little girls with our crayons, right? This is more about just adding down little tiny bits of color. So if you guys pay attention to when I'm coloring something, you're going to notice me make either a dash, you know, a little tiny swipe, or a dot. Um, and so it, I've always kind of joked with my customers that it's like Morris code, right? A dot or a dash. Um, so if you have a small um, area, kind of like I do with these leaves, I will make either a small dash 
or a dot, like in the corners, it's dot all the way because that is a way that I can get this ni the, the nib of the marker into those little tiny crevices without going across the lines. Like my, my ink, we've used the intense black ink, that's on your supply list as well. Um, we've used the intense black so that when our marker touches it, it will not smear or smudge that color. However, your marker or your ink will stay there but if you color outside the lines, your marker is still going to be on the outside of that black line. And I don't want that, right? So I just like to use a little tiny bit of color. And um, it may or may not make it a little bit slower. I'm not really sure. But just a little dot, a little dash, that's all that it takes. Now what we have done is I've gone on the lightest shade of the dull green. I think I didn't tell you guys that. The dull green blend is what we're using today. So the darkest of the dull green blend, I went and I colored all of my leaves, okay? Now I'm going in with my light end on my the same marker on my dull green, and I am just anywhere that I want that lighter color, I'm just touching my marker there, and I'll hold this up so you guys can see it once more in a moment. Um, this is going to act um, similarly to the blender marker or the eraser marker, is it's actually going to um, kind of push that uh, dark color away, and that lighter color will pop to the surface. And it's going to give you, it's going to give you, it's going to give you the look of like this girl was doing some shading, and she knew exactly what she was doing, right? Even though we don't. So you can see how it's already made that color kind of pop up off of there. I think that my um, phone is kind of blowing out the color just a little bit. I'm still still fiddling with my lighting. I'm not really sure why it does that. So my apologies. Um, I think you guys can probably see it okay. But that is going to give us a little bit of a lighter tone to the inside of our leaves with the same marker, okay? If you guys wanna get real fancy with your flowers, you can do the very same thing with whichever color of marker you want to color your flowers. I, of course, stuck with the coral and the orange because that is, um, that's the most floral color of the color palette on the paper. Um, I don't see many blue flowers. I didn't wanna make a green flower, but I wanted something that would coordinate. So the orange, I felt, looked really, really nice. So again, I've stamped and cut out my pieces done a little bit of fussy cutting and I can usually do a pretty good job if I am not rushed. So that's why I wanted to do it before we started. So I have all of my pieces ready to go and we are going to go ahead and we're going to begin assembling our cards. So um, you're going to need your back piece. You're going to need um, your front piece. Now, you guys know we have two-tone cardstock, okay? So um, you are not really going to see the top of the back portion. So you need to determine which um, which side, which shade you want to have your card. And do you want your front to match your back? I personally want my front to match my back. So I'm going to have the darker of the two shades of the mink. So this is the darker, so I'm gonna flip it over. So that is what's gonna match on the back. And then this is the darker of the two and I want this on the front here, okay? So those are my two card pieces. Now what we're gonna do is add a little bit of adhesive um, to the front of our panel here. Now what we're gonna do is, it's a frame of course, and you guys could see in the original that a, about um, a little under a quarter of an inch is gonna actually stick out in that window. So you want to be careful that you don't go um, too far towards the inside with your adhesive, because you don't want your adhesive to show and you don't want it to cause a mess whenever you fold it up either. So just make sure you keep your adhesive around the outer edge of that, okay? Um, mine never really looks um, super pretty. Adhesive never looks pretty for me, and that's okay because it doesn't really have to, right? So now what we're gonna do is since you have your adhesive on the front, we are going to just hold the front portion of our card over that little decorative window and center it so you have about the same width of that green border all the way around. And so now we have the decorative portion on there. So now you guys, if you're looking at this, you will see um, our score lines. Maybe, maybe the lighting will pick it up. There's a score line that's a half of an inch in from both sides and there's a score line that's one inch in from both sides. And so what we're going to do is the, the score line that's on the innermost um, of, the, of your card, we're going to fold it in a mountain fold. Okay. Fold it in a mountain fold front of our card, mountain fold, and the other one is a valley fold, and they're both gonna match. So both sides you will fold just like that, okay? We'll give these a good score here in a moment, but you guys can see kind of what we're doing, okay? So the middle one is a mountain fold. The outer one is a valley fold, so it is folded back the other way. 
you can you can tell immediately when you guys begin folding these that your um, your green your decorative frame there really 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 um, does a good job of providing that additional stability that we're needing. That was the goal, right? It's, it's, it's a bonus that it's pretty, but that was our goal. So we want to make sure that we give it a really, really good crease um, because... Anytime you have an element in a, a card or a layout that is um, essentially interactive where it's going to, you know, pop up or it's going to spring or it's going to hinge or fold or flap or, you know, all those things, right? Um, a good crease is really kind of what makes it or breaks it for those little elements, okay? So now this is what we have going on. Okay, so what we're now going to do is we're going to have a little bit of adhesive that's going to go on the back panels here. Okay, however, I have something that is sticking on here. So I'm going to grab really quickly because I don't want to put it together and have something that's going to, you know, make itself stick together. I'm just going to lift that off of there with my with my rub and remove eraser. I was, as I said, I'm a little messy with my adhesive. It's just kind of a trademark of mine, apparently. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm not sticky so we're not going to stick to anything whenever we close it all up and put it in the envelope. So now what we can do is we want really good strong adhesive and we're going to add adhesive on these back two flaps right here. Now what I'm going to do, <coughs> pardon me. You guys can use uh, liquid adhesive or you can even use Tombow if you would like. But when I need something that's really, really sturdy, I usually will grab my score tape. Um, this is, you guys know, I've, I probably say it in every single video, liquid adhesive is just not my friend. Um, it just really is not my friend. Um, I, I use it, of course, and it's very useful. Many times we're getting ready to use it here in a moment, of course. Um, but I, anytime that I can use a dry adhesive and get away with it, I'm going to, just because I feel like it has, um, it is, it is nicer to me. Um, I tend to be a little heavy handed with the liquid adhesive <laughs> as we're getting ready to see in a moment. Okay. So now we have some score tape on the back here. Okay. And we are going to put it together. Now, don't worry, we do not have to put our pattern paper on the back of it until after it's put together. That's going to help us center it and we'll be able to get everything just right that way. So don't don't fret. We are not going out of order, I promise. So I'm going to go ahead and take my, um, I'm going to grab my tweezers and I'm going to pull off one of these. Now what we're going to do is it is going to go right to the edge of the back of our card base, okay? Okay, so you guys can kind of see what we're doing now, right? So I've adhered it down, that back flap, and this is what we're building. It's really the coolest thing when you get them on here. It is this neatest little thing that they're the same width across there, this edge and this edge, but there's just enough tension with those scored flaps that it makes it bow up. It's so cool. It's, it's like paper has elasticity or something. It's just too cool. I love it. This is, again, like I said, the... The coolest, just easiest to put together interactive card you have ever created, I promise. It's so fun. And the neat thing about that is that if you guys are putting one of these together because you qualified for the kit, then you have inside the digital files that will come to your email or you will scan them off of the QR code that's on the kit envelope. Um, the cool thing about that is that there's a Cricut Design Space link for you and a cutting guide. So if you guys just really love this card design, you have the Cricut file and the cutting guide to create more of them if you would like. And that's just something that comes with the kit. So um, I want you guys to get a lot of value out of your stamp set. And if you want to create more of these, then I want you to be able to. And so um, I, of course, wanted to provide the resources for you guys to do that. So now you can see how we have built this together, right? Isn't that super cool? I love it. I love it. And it will just flatten. Look how flat it is. I love it. It's so fun. Okay. So what we're going to do is let's get our liquid adhesive out and start saying all the bad words, right? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but um, maybe I'm not kidding. If you guys have seen me in the liquid adhesive, let me tell you. Okay. I nicked one of these, so I'm going to switch it out. Hold it tight, my friends. We're going we're gonna to borrow one that I didn't nick with my tweezers. Okay. We'll save that one for another day. All right, so we will put 
some liquid adhesive on this little scallop piece and it's just going to add a little decorative layer. It's to absolutely not uh, necessary at all for the fundamental portion of the card. It doesn't need this to work. Again, this is just for um, adding some decoration. It's the only purpose for it. So we are going to place it right down here. And the cool part about liquid adhesive is you can move it around. So if you want it to be pulled all the way out to the edge like I am, I'm pulling my out to the edge a little bit so that my scallops cover up the edge of that gray. Hang on just a moment and I'll show you what I mean if I can get the darn thing to move. Okay, so we brought it all the way to the edge so it's gonna cover up that gray, okay? So we'll do the same thing with this one. I always use too much or too little. It's it's just, a am just used to it now. And these are really sturdy, guys, especially thanks to that the, the um, stability of that extra layer in there. So don't be afraid to kind of pull and tug and all of that when you want to get your um, piece on here even, okay? Um, what I found whenever I was initially creating this design is that when I put the scallops on before I um, assembled the card, I tend to kind of booger them up. I was pinching the edges and um, they didn't look very pretty. So I, f I felt like I got the best result if I placed them on after I assembled the actual card. So now... I wanted to mention to you guys as well, an A2 size, um, and that's what our envelopes are. They will fit a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, okay? Um, those cards are usually four and a quarter wide. However, you guys may or may not notice, but your cards that you got from me are four inches wide. Your base is four inches wide, okay? And that is because um, we are gonna have a little bit of that scallop that overhangs. And so by the time you have an overhang on the left and an overhang on the right, you're gonna get near four and a quarter. If we would have started the card at four and a quarter and had that cute little overhang on the scallops, then it would be too wide to fit in an envelope. So just by shrinking that a little tiny bit, that is all that it took um, so that we would able to still be using those standard size card bases. Um, that being said, if you guys want to make it wider when you make your own, all you have to do is increase that by a quarter of an inch and, um, and maybe leave off the scallop because like I said, it won't fit in a regular envelope that way, okay? So now um, we can go ahead and grab our pattern paper. So again, I am using the striped. I'm gonna put my adhesive on the back and then what I'm gonna do is since this is a smaller size piece in comparison to our window, since we went ahead and we put it together, we can see exactly where it needs to line up at so that it covers that window, okay? Maybe we'll move it over a little bit to the left. We're just keeping it real around here, guys. Just real. There's no there's no editing of these videos. There's no prep work. Here we go. Hang tight. Hang tight. I got it a little tiny bit crooked in there. Tweezers for the win. Okay. Okay. All right, now um, we can put our sentiment there in the middle and I'm gonna put a little bit of foam tape on it because I don't mind to put foam tape. I'm, I'm super love to put foam tape on my cards when I create them. Um, some of you guys, I know that's not your thing and that's okay, um, but I, I don't mind that little layer of foam tape and it doesn't bother me that it makes my cards a little bit thicker for mailing and I don't mind to put an extra stamp on there either. So um, foam tape for the win. If you guys don't want foam tape, then these pieces that we're putting foam tape on, just go ahead and place them down with regular adhesive so they lay up a little bit flatter and closer to the surface and um, then you can not have to worry about your cards being too fat. I don't mind them chunky. 
Okay, like I said, remember, you can smush this all the way down. You're not gonna hurt anything. So as you're placing your pieces on, don't be afraid to just kind of smash it down a little bit so that you can make sure that you get it centered. And this is much easier to do it this way than to try to put all of that stuff on inside and then place your um, your front on the outer edge. You're gonna, they're gonna make, have much, much more difficulty um, doing it that way. So now we can place our sweet little skunk and our little flowers on there. What I'm gonna do is I want my skunk holding one of these little flowers. She has, um, she looks like she should be holding something in the little image here. So we're gonna have her holding a flower. So I am just going to get a little bit of, this is the thin 3D foam tape, okay? Not the, the normal thickness. This is the thin stuff. And I am going to add a layer. I am going to add a layer right here to the flower. And then we're gonna add a little bit behind her as well. So by the time we're done, we'll have about the, the same, you know, the regular layer of foam tape. Okay, got it down here. Now what we want to do, this is something that we need to keep in mind anytime you guys are adding elements around your frame. And if you'll notice on the other cards, pretty much everything, all of our skunks or our sentiments and flowers, they're basically framing that opening, okay? Here's one that has um, just the sentiment across there, which I thought he was pretty cute standing on the little stump down there. I absolutely love that card. Um, but we want to make sure that we omit adhesive that's behind um, a part that is inside that window because when they we smash it to put it in the envelope We don't want this sticking to the back here and keeping the card closed We want it popping up when they take it out of the envelope So what we just make need to make sure that we do is decide where you would like to place it Okay, and then you need to make a note in your mind where the adhesive needs to sit so that it's not inside this envelope. So as you can see, if I place my skunk right here where I have it sitting, then I know that I can put a little bit of adhesive on this edge of the face, and I can put adhesive down here where the flower is and the bottom of the tail. But I don't wanna put adhesive up here um, that's gonna be part of that opening, okay? And so um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting up there in age, right? Ha ha ha, you guys know what I mean, some of you do. Um, so many times when I do this, I'll just quickly turn it over and put a little pencil mark there to just remind myself because I tell you, by the time I go over to my foam tape and I get it cut uh, to length, I have probably already forgotten where I can place it and I end up putting it on the wrong edge and then I just have a wild crazy mess. So. Um, pencil for the win, okay? One day when you're old like me, you will understand if you're not there already. Okay, so put a little bit down here. We got it a little long, so we'll trim it off. Okay, so now we'll add this little guy. You can see just adhesive on those edges that are not going to be over in that window. Okay, now, if you blunder, I'm just making sure that we didn't, we didn't, we're perfect. If you blunder, um, grab your anti-static tool, okay? Everybody's got those little pouches. If mine was sitting right next to me, I would pull it over here, but it's not, oh, here it is. Um, one of these, these are, I, I learned, uh, they were called an embossing buddy when I was learning, um, crafting, but, um, this would be a great way to take the sticky off of stickers or adhesive, um, things like that, that you, um, it might be a little difficult to get your rub and remove eraser down in there like we did before. Um, so you would take your anti-static pouch and tuck it up under there and dab that a few times. And that would take the sticky away from your foam tape. So you won't have to worry about it sticking when it smashes, you won't have it sticking to this uh, bottom layer, okay? So we've got um, two of our elements on. Let's put a little bit of foam tape on this little tiny bitty one up here. We're gonna place it. It's just gonna be overhanging a little bit. So I think, I, I feel confident. I feel confident that I can remember which way we're placing it, okay? So we've got just a little bit of foam tape up here on the top. And again, once more, don't be afraid to kind of push that down and get it maneuvered around there and get a really good um, adherence. You know, smash it down really good so it's not going to fly off there or, or go anywhere, okay? Oh my gosh, I love it! 
I love it. Now, just a few dots, you guys, and we're done. Now, I use two different um, colors of dots. My The funnest thing ever, I love these, and I, I mentioned that when we got our catalog back in the fall, is that I loved that we got um, in each of the packages, they're kind of color families, right? So you've got three different Close to My Heart palette matches. You have three shapes and three sizes, which I just thought was super cool. So what I have been doing, and you guys have um, seen me do with kits um, the past, you know, however many months since we got these, is um, we'll use a kit and maybe I'll use a few from one color family and a few from the other. Um, and so these are just something you guys can keep in your stash, add them to your cart. This is an element that I'm using in this video that is not added in your kit. So you guys can either use bling that's in your stash, um, you can use a different color, a different style, whatever you want to do, or you could create these without bling. It's up to you, but these are not included in your kit. So just go through, if you've already purchased these, these match perfectly. So I use the red dots that has, um, these great shades here. And then I also use the melon. Okay. So we will put, um, I placed a few of the, I believe these are papaya, however they match paprika really well. Paprika is the color of the orange that we're using in the kit, but I'm pretty sure these are papaya dots and they match perfectly. So I'm going to put just a few of these underneath our sentiment. And you'll notice I did change the sentiment. Um, the one that was in the display card uh, said, sometimes life just stinks, but I felt like I was going to probably need more birthday cards than life just stinks cards, or at least I hope I don't need more life just stinks cards. And so, um, I swapped out my uh, sentiment and the fun thing about this stamp set guys, like so many others, it's one of, one of the things that I notice when I'm looking at stamp sets when the um, sentiments are all kind of the same, about the same size, not exactly the same size, but kind of um, near each other. And that's really fun because when you have an available space for a sentiment stamped image, um, you can easily swap those out depending on the needs of the project that you're working on. And I just love that. I think that is just, you know, it's just one of the reasons um, that I find makes a stamp set even more versatile. And that is a very big selling point for me when I'm trying to decide, um, you know, what I want to add to my inventory. So I'm adding just a few. I've got two middle dots and two baby dots. And I've just kind of added them around our elements down here. Maybe we'll put one. Maybe we'll quit while we're ahead. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll add a couple more down here. I love it. I love it. Cute, cute, cute. So papaya hearts and then melon dots. I love it, you guys. This is so fun. I think you are going to absolutely love, 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 love creating these this month. So all of them are going to go together. Um, and just like we did this one today, you'll just, of course, swap out um, any of your skunks, any of your sentiments, and you can pick pick and choose, um, you know, the pattern papers versus the um, colors of cardstocks. You guys can, can mix and match. You can flip them over and use the opposite sides. So there are some on the back here that you guys didn't even see me use in the kit because they weren't my favorite patterns. Um, so you can really make it, uh, make it your own. So you have all of these pieces in the kit that you will um, receive from me with your order of $75 during the month of May. Now, um, if your order pops up to $125, you're going to get both of the kits, the um, Stamp of the Month um, 6 Project kit, and you'll get the add-on kit as well, um, providing I still have them in stock there while supplies last. You can see all of that over on the blog. But the kit this month that's the Stamp of the Month kit does come with two of the mini album pages. These are 8 by 6 pages. Um, and we do have, if maybe you're watching this on YouTube and you are not familiar with Close to My Heart or you're not familiar with, um, you know, many aspects of kind of our product line and that type of thing, we do have, um, we do have scrapbooking albums and page protectors that will fit the eight by six size. Okay. So you can work alongside me and the rest of my customers putting together a mini album throughout the year, um, when you earn your kits and, um, by the time you're done, you have an album to place them in and you'll have uh, page protectors that you can get as well. So for the kit during May, you've got two mini album pages. 
And then you have the four um, interactive uh, shadow box cards. There's, of course, five here because we just put one together. So if you guys have questions about the kit this month or how you can earn it for free, you are welcome to comment below or you can send me a message. All of my links should be down below for you. And um, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful May. And um, be sure to check out the other video um, for May where I put together the mini album pages as well. And I'm also going to show you the um, big 12 by 12 workshop using the brand new special as well. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. I'm so grateful. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.